So in this video, I'm going to be building a custom flying V with a Ouija board top. I'll be using this V body from Bargain Musician and this neck with a reverse headstock, which will also feature the Ouija uh, board top. But before I get started, I'm just going to point out really quick that I only use the bridge pick of my guitars. <laughs> not gonna have the neck pickup. It's only gonna have one volume pot and the output jack is gonna be re relocated to the inside of the top horn because it makes it easier for me to place my cable over my strap instead of having my cable come all the way down which is a really dumb way to do it. Just my opinion. I'm gonna start off by taping the fretboard so it won't get painted by the matte clear coat I'm gonna be applying on the body and the neck. There's not going to be any finish applied to this. It's only it's going to be a natural wood. Hey guys, so instead of having music, I kind of wanted to talk to you guys through the building of this guitar. Right away, uh, we can see the big old smudge left from that clear coat that I used because I sprayed it way too close to the neck. Everything else came out great except the body, which had the same issue, which was my fault for spraying way too close. This is the guitar just drawing after a couple of uh, clear coats. The fretboard needed some conditioning, so I used the Dunlop uh, fretboard conditioner. And it made it look really good. Uh, this is my second Luminlay install. It was a little bit faster than the first one, but it was still sloppy because I don't have the right tools or the right place to do it at. I also ran out of material after the 15th fret, so there's no luminly DOS up there. I don't really need them anyway. The Ouija board I'm using is, is a uh, tabletop placemat thing from Spirit Halloween Store. And it won't fit the body, so I had to come up with the solution for that, which you'll see in a bit. As far as the holes I'm not using, um, I just made a couple of cardboard cutouts, and I stacked them on top of each other until they were flush with the body, because they don't need to be seen, and they're not going to be used, so... Cardboard was a really cheap solution for that problem. Same for the neck pickup. These tuning machines came from China and they had they had little red eyes that I painted black because they really weren't going to work with the overall theme of the guitar. It was a cheap solution and it looks pretty good from far away. So on my AliExpress custom Les Paul build video, a lot of people were complaining that I said that the whole process took me a whole month to complete. I'm going to show you why. I ordered a bunch of parts for this flying V and they've slowly been coming in. I just got the bridge and I just opened it up and this is what I got. There's like no QC that oversaw that problem. That's why things take a long time because they're coming from China and they're wrong. So I went with the nail polish and just slapped it on there. I'm using blue tape to do a quick template for this output jack plate so I can start drilling the hole that will connect to the pickup cavity 
And this is definitely the last guitar I'll be building in this room because look at this cloud of smoke that comes out. That's just all <laughs> burning wood. So it made a big mess. So I went outside and finished it. And that's the end result. It's really sloppy. The pickup I'll be using, it's an EMG HZ4 because it doesn't use batteries and it sounds really good. This is a really sloppy way to route a pickup cavity, but it works and I just needed to throw that pickup ring in there. But yeah, it's really bad. Uh, the wiring came out really, really easy because of the little connectors EMG has designed for their pickups and their wiring. So it made the whole process extremely quick. The only issue was uh, running the cable from the output jack location to the pickup cavity. Look at those fumes from the solder. Yeah, just breathe all that in. It's delicious. First time that's ever happened where I wire something up and it works right away. The gluing of the top was really, really annoying because it's, it doesn't want to stay down and I had it route or not bro, I had to cut out every single section that was gonna have the guitar part coming through it. So that made it extremely time consuming and this overall process took like a day or two to finish. There's that cardboard exoskeleton thing that I made for the control cavity. And this is the part that kind of ruined the guitar because the horns needed some sort of splicing from the material that I'm working with and it doesn't really match. So I glued these sections on the top horn that came out extremely bad. The lower horn wasn't that bad and the headstock came out really well. So that kind of annoys me how the top horn came out really bad and there's really nothing I can do about it. It's going to stay like that until I get tired of it and trash it or something. I don't know. And this is the gluing of the top horn and you can see how bad it looks in a bit. Look at that, it looks terrible. If you notice the headstock says no and the top horn says yes. I'm almost done with this guitar. I just need to pick up a few more parts. And we're here at Sam Ash. So Sam Ash only had these uh, Dunlop strap locks. We have to go to Guitar Center now. All right, let's see if Guitar Center will have what we need. So Guitar Center had the Black Beauty strings, which was what I was looking for initially. During the installation of the strap locks, I had to drill through the neck plate because there was no other place I wanted to attach that strap lock to.
black beauties aren't my top choice of strings but i just needed some black strings to go with the theme of the guitar and right here is another problem because i started tuning the first string and i realized that the tuning peg was broken there's no there was no uh coiling of the string so i noticed that way too late and had to find the replacement So I broke it apart and I realized and I saw that the gear was never going to turn because these slots on the post are straight. They're supposed to be slanted. So I don't know how that made it out of the factory. It's really bad. Luckily, my friend uh, gave me one of his tuning pegs off his old guitar and saved me a couple bucks. So thanks for that, Oscar. And I just swapped the little skull knob or the little button to the new tuning machine and installed it. I've built and restored a bunch of other guitars, but this was the most challenging one because of the way I designed it. That's it for this really long video. Thank you for watching the making of this guitar. I really liked how it came out. Aside from a couple of issues that are always gonna bother me, I really look forward to playing this on stage and in a couple of videos coming up. Thank you, and we'll see what happens.